This is Techno, a show about innovations that can change lives. The science of fighting a wildfire. We're going to explore the intersection of hardware and humanity, and we're doing it in a unique <laughs> way. This is a show about science. Oh, oh my God. By scientists. Tonight, Techno investigates dirty gold. See the color of this river? This, it's not normal. Inside the illegal gold trade. Profits are enormous. Destruction, immediate. But what happens to that gold once it leaves Peru? We have two of these gold chains in front of you. Just by looking at the chain itself, can you tell if either of these are dirty? What would be your guess? I'm Phil Torres. I'm an entomologist. I do much of my research in this territory. They've tested the water. They've tested the sediment. I'll share my findings with Marita Davison. She's an environmental biologist. What size of an area are we looking at here? And Lindsay Moran, a former CIA analyst. One of them was at Macy's. And the other was at Tiffany. So now, what can you say? That's our team. Now let's do some science. Hey guys, welcome to Techno. I'm Phil Torres, joined by Lindsay Moran and Marita Davison. Now, as you guys know, when I do my science, it's all spiders and butterflies. And when I'm in the field, I love going to Peru. The rainforest there is amazing. But the last time I was there, I looked out the window flying in, and I noticed a huge section of the forest was missing. And you have to be talking about the devastating impacts of gold mining, illegal gold mining that's been hitting Peru, my home country of Bolivia, and the entire region really, it's been happening for the past few decades. Phil, since you first brought this story to Techno, the question we've been asking is, can anything be done to stop the destruction of the rainforest or even restore it? You no, know, those are the big questions. And thanks to a team that we joined on the ground there in Peru, we're starting to get some answers and there is hope. Amazon rainforest, legendary, primeval. It's home to 10% of the world's known species. Its ancient trees remove millions of tons of carbon dioxide a year from the atmosphere. And its moisture may impact rainfall as far away as the Pacific Northwest. The soil underneath some of the rainforest is laced with gold. And each year, an illegal gold rush is turning thousands of acres of this natural wonder into a toxic wasteland. Techno has been documenting the devastation since January of 2015. As we follow the science, our investigation has taken us from the Carnegie Institution's Department of Global Ecology in Stanford. But you calculate the carbon based on the structure, yes. right? Yeah. Yes. To the heart of the Peruvian rainforest. See the color of this river? This, it's not normal. It's a sign that there are illegal gold mining operations upriver from where we are now. This is Tambopata National Reserve, in Madre de Dios, the mother of God. It's one of the world's most diverse ecosystems and one of Peru's most threatened. This is La Pampa in the buffer zone of the Tambopata Reserve. It's been devastated by illegal mining. But a small community of artisanal miners known as the Manuanis are hoping to bring the rainforest back to La Pampa. They're working with Peruvian ecologist Francisco Roman. Si uno no hace nada, el proceso de recuperación va a durar cientos de años. Cientos de años, de mil o, o más. The only way into their camp is on the back of a motorbike on a flooded dirt path. We've been driving for miles into what should be pristine rainforest, but instead, it looks like this. Skeletal remains hint at the forest that used to thrive here. So behind me, I can hear some macaws calling, and I think they actually have a nest up at the top of one of those trees. And that's one of the problems with this mining. Once they deplete this area, they keep pushing further and further back into the forest, and the wildlife have nowhere to go. 
But can this land ever return to the pristine rainforest it once was? The prospect is daunting, work that has never been done before with devastation this complete. Esta área que ustedes le ven todo desolada no es depredado por los mineros de Manuani, sino es por la minería ilegal que han invadido áreas de terrenos. Sabina Valdez is the president of the Association of Miners at the River Manuani. Skyrocketing gold prices have pitted small artisanal miners like the Manuanis against larger illegal operations run by outsiders. But these miners have a stake in the land. Le compramos y votamos a la semana a todos los mineros ilegales. Ya quedó esta área así desolada. In 2013, they began working with Francisco Roman and a group of government and research facilities. The goal? To find out how to grow new life in the soil mining leaves behind. What do miners do to the earth when they do mining? Lo primero es cortar los árboles, eh, luego eh, con, con unas mangueras y con unas motobombas empiezan a inyectar agua al suelo. The process turns the soil into 95% sand, almost devoid of all organic matter. This may be the biggest challenge scientists face. Another problem is miners often contaminate the soil with mercury. They use it to bind those tiny flecks of gold into a clump. Tropical ecologist Luis Fernandez is the director of the Carnegie Amazon Mercury Ecosystem Project. Gold here is not very concentrated. It's only about two grams per ton of rock. Instead of manually concentrating that tiny amount of gold in an awful lot of rock, you take some of the sediment, some water, and a little bit of mercury, and you mix it up. Where else does this mercury end up? Because the mercury is dumped into the rivers and lakes, it then gets into the food chain. Mercury can concentrate in sediments and be absorbed into the plants. So in areas that were former mining zones, there is a lot of questions about what's next. So this whole area was more recently mined in the yes, last, last yes, couple of years. Yes. Then... It's those questions Francisco and his team hope to answer. They showed us how they have begun to test what can grow in degraded land like this. They begin by planting species known as pioneers. They are fast-growing plants natural to the area that can survive in tough circumstances. Elegimos especies de rápido crecimiento, que les gusta la luz, que producen flores y frutos a una corta edad. This line, okay, represents the frontier between two treatments, the control plot and the pure treatment. You can see the difference in growth. Wow. So tropical plants normally don't need fertilizer because it's already mm -hmm. in the soil, mm -hmm. but these are getting it, they're growing more, and these are not, and they're barely growing. Yeah, yeah, because the, the soil is very, very poor. In the first six months of the experiment, plants treated with pure biofertilizer survived at higher rate and grew almost three times the height as those without fertilizer. Two meters. Roman is also studying whether microorganisms in biofertilizer will prevent mercury from contaminating plants. The hypothesis is in the pure treatment, you know, where where was applied by fertilizer, uh, maybe microorganisms immobilize mercury in the soil, and uh, plants are free of mercury. But hope comes with a high price. Pure biofertilizer is not cheap. It costs at least a thousand dollars more per two and a half acre plot to treat plants with pure biofertilizer. The idea here is life begets life. This isn't just planting trees, this is planting the basis for an ecosystem to come back fully to this region. Can this new life beget a rainforest? Under the best of circumstances, it will take decades, and the lure of gold is still drawing miners to the area. But the people here hope they are planting more than seedlings. They hope to plant an idea that will grow. The Peruvian rainforest covers about 60% of the country, but the devastation caused there by illegal gold mining is not just a Peruvian problem. It's also a problem for the rest of us. Why? Because these trees store carbon, 
more than six and a half billion metric tons. That's more than three times the amount of carbon dioxide released by the United States in a year. This is the Carnegie Airborne Observatory. Director Greg Asner flew the one-of-a-kind laboratory in the sky over the Peruvian rainforest. His goal, to create a revolutionary new map of Peru, one that shows how much carbon the country sequesters and where it's stored. He showed off some of his work to Techno's Marita Davison. Trees are the best storage units of this thing called carbon. Trees take up carbon dioxide and they store the carbon out of the carbon dioxide in their tissues. This is how a stretch of the Peruvian rainforest appears from the plain to the naked eye. But this is how the observatory's unique 3D laser imaging system sees the forest. What size of an area are we looking at here? And this is two and a half, three acres, call it. And this is what you use to calculate, say, carbon stocks? Yeah, this is critical to understanding how much carbon is stored in the forest because the principal determinant is the volume of the forest. Yeah. This map shows Peru's carbon geography. The areas in red store the most carbon. One of the most carbon dense regions of Peru is Madre de Dios. Now, if it's not in the trees, where is it? It's in the atmosphere as carbon dioxide. Destruction of rainforest from illegal mining is a global problem when it comes to climate change. But in Madre de Dios, it's personal to people who depend on the land for survival, as Phil Torres found out firsthand. On the shores of the Madre de Dios River, we met with a community of indigenous people called Tres Islas. They are struggling with a choice between preserving old ways of life and saving their land from destruction. These piles of gravel are damage left behind by illegal miners, outsiders who invaded the area as gold prices soared. Ah, no, la minería ilegal es este una minería que es, es, es que se está trabajando irresponsablemente, ¿no? Sergio Perea Ponce is president of Tres Islas. He is also a gold miner, as was his father before him. ¿Por cuántos años su comunidad ha hecho minería? 60 hace, años, hace... años, más o menos. Sus ancestros trabajan así. Ancestros. Sí. Artesanalmente trabajamos, para subsistir nomás. Wow. I traveled with him and his wife by boat to a mining camp they're building. They want to create a sustainable way to mine that can be a model for small artisanal miners. Porque nosotros vivimos aquí, aquí vamos a morir. Aquí, ¿no? Nuestros hijos también van a crecer, todos estamos viviendo acá, entonces tenemos que ver también ¿no? trabajar conjuntamente, ¿no? Todo lo que dice el gobierno. Tres Islas is located in a 1900 square mile corridor that the government has designated as the only area in Madre de Dios where miners can operate legally, if they qualify. The idea is to keep miners out of protected rainforest like this and regulate how they operate. Perea Ponce hopes the government will legalize their operation. Estamos este, haciendo un, un, creando un ejemplo nosotros, ¿no? Para poder que el gobierno nos dé nos tu, este, nos tu formalización para seguir trabajando, ¿no? One of the ways these miners hope to qualify for legalization is by working with Francisco Román to reforest areas damaged by mining. Este árbol parece diferente que el otro. ¿Por qué? Esto, esto está con abono. Esto de acá siempre ha existido. Esto tiene casi dos años. Esto, en cambio, tiene seis meses. Wow, dos años, seis meses. Their job is made easier by the fact that parts of the forest are still standing. La selva era muy cerca. ¿Cómo cambia la regeneración? Cambia mucho. En tres islas, eh, la regeneración, como vimos, era relativamente buena. Esa cantidad de materia orgánica ya eh, puede ser un poco mejor eh, para, la, para el crecimiento de árboles. This lake is an example of what's possible when some forest is left intact. Eight years ago, it was an active mine. Now, it's got life. There are caiman around. There are giant river otters around here. They've tested the water. They've tested the sediment. No detectable traces of mercury, but the question remains, what's in the fish? Están preocupados del mucurio. 
estamos un poco preocupados ahorita, ¿no? Por la gran contaminación. But Perea Ponce hopes in the future he can prevent mercury contamination with this, a concrete unit to store waste liquid from the mining process. Como puedo decir, ya uno que pasa ahí, acá ya se, esto está bien sellado. Despite these changes, for these people, it is a waiting game to see if it's enough for the government to grant them legal status. Ojalá no alguien que nos ayude, no, porque nos falta dinero. Nos falta un poco de dinero para poder terminar la formalización, como dice la ley. It's very difficult to get formal and stay formal. It's a tough market. Ernesto Reyes Luna is a former advisor to Peru's Ministry of Environment. We know that many people now engaged in, in legal extraction will not be able to get formal. You need to provide alternatives, even uh, training so that they can do something else. In Tres Isla, some members are trying other ways of making a living, like harvesting Brazil nuts from the giant castaña trees that grow in the Peruvian Amazon. Lo que estamos haciendo en mi comunidad, estamos zonificando las áreas. Una zona para... Sí. Para oro, claro. otra zona para... Sí, una zona determinada para oro, una zona determinada para castaña. But with Brazil nuts averaging a few dollars per pound and gold prices well over a thousand dollars an ounce, will efforts like this be enough to put a dent in illegal mining? There is hope because human beings can do great things, and the great things that we do don't need to be just destructive things. But the key element is knowledge. You need to know in order to act. Gold, sought after for its beauty, but at what price? How does a buyer know the real cost of a gold ring? So these are the rings. These are the rings. This is where we show customers when they come in for an appointment. At Brilliant Earth, Beth Gerstein wants her customers to feel confident that a ring doesn't come at the expense of human rights or environmental devastation. I really didn't want a symbol of love between me and my husband to be associated with such atrocities. Now, when you first started, was it just about the conflict diamonds or did you talk gold? Well, the first issue was about blood diamonds and then we started to learn more about the issues in the gold industry. Gold mining is actually one of the dirtiest industries for mining. The gold you see in these rings is all recycled. So this is one of our more popular styles, our willow ring. And this is gold? It is gold, yeah, it's from recycled gold. It's re-refined to have the identical quality. Brilliant Earth is one of more than 100 retailers who have made a commitment to source their gold responsibly by signing on to Earthworks' No Dirty Gold campaign. What is dirty gold? Dirty gold is gold that was extracted at a cost to people and the planet that is unacceptable that may have come at the price of human rights, pristine forests, and clean water. What percentage of gold in the U.S. do you think is, is dirty gold? Yeah, that's a great question. I think we're going to have to assume that most of the gold that is newly mined and sold in U.S. jewelry stores is irresponsibly produced because we don't have that independent certificate that provides us assurance otherwise. To grasp why it's difficult to know if gold is clean or dirty, you have to understand the twisted route it can travel from mine to retailer. Take illegally mined gold from Madre de Dios, for example. For a piece like this, the first stop is often here in Puerto Maldonado, the capital of Madre de Dios. All along this area, we've been told that this is where people will buy and exchange gold, maybe send it off to Lima or other places. According to a report by the fair labor nonprofit Verite, illegal gold is laundered by middlemen, then sold to jewelry makers in Lima and refineries as far away as the United States and Switzerland. There, the gold is melted down and purified before being sold again. Often, retailers know little about the origin of the gold they sell, as Techno found out when it visited the jewelry district in Los Angeles. I just talked to all the vendors inside there, and none of them could tell us where the gold actually came out of the earth. And in fact, one said, if somebody did tell us where it came from, don't believe them. We have two of these gold chains in front of you. Just by looking at the chain itself, can you tell if either of these are dirty? What would be your guess? The only way I would be able to tell you um, is if this box here had a label and it told me about the provenance of the gold. One of them was at Macy's, and the other was 
at Tiffany. So now, what can you say? I can tell you that of these two companies, Tiffany and Company has signed on to the New Dirty Gold campaign pledge. Macy and Company has not and has been asked too many times. Tiffany and Company can really tell you about the antecedents of this gold, whereas Macy and Company cannot. Ten years ago, Tiffany and Company became the first retailer to sign the No Dirty Gold pledge. Most of their gold comes from recycled sources, the bulk of the rest from a single mine in Utah. They found a way to, to make that supply chain shorter. They found a way to make it more transparent and to have more control over where they're getting the metal from. Tell me more about traceability. How challenging is that? For us, that was one of the hardest things that we had to encounter when we first started. We'd ask our manufacturers, where does the gold come from? Is it recycled? And they'd say, well, you know, I'm not exactly sure. Once they see that there's a market opportunity, they start asking the, the important questions and making sure that they meet our standards and it's traceable. Macy's is the fifth largest jewelry retailer in the United States. The company turned down Techno's request for an on-camera interview, but in an email response, a spokesman said, while we agree in spirit with the principles of no dirty gold, significant problems exist with gold and mineral traceability and verification. We support the creation of an independent and universally accepted standard for certifying gold and other minerals. What do you think? Do you think there's a need for something like that? There's a need for something like that that is currently being created. The Initiative for Responsible Mining Assurance is currently in development to provide that kind of independent label. Macy's needs to be part of that creation. Now, what can consumers out there do when they hear about dirty gold problems? They can really vote with their wallet, asking the right questions. What should they ask? Where does the gold come from? What are the practices surrounding the product that I'm actually buying? Questions that may help preserve pristine rainforest like this, one of Earth's most vital treasures. Okay guys, so I brought a few gold pieces that my grandmother gave me. These have been in my family for a long time. They were obtained in the Bolivian rainforest. And after this piece, Phil, you've got me wondering, I mean, by what methods were these gold pieces obtained? Is there any way for me to know? I will say, considering it was from Bolivia and that old, probably was more the artisanal style of gold mining, which isn't quite as damaging, but I'm sure they did use quite a bit of mercury with it. Lindsay, we asked you to look at this issue from a law enforcement perspective. What did you find? Well, it's a challenge. In some ways, it's very similar to the war on drugs, which ultimately was a failed war. You have an area where there are very porous borders, where there's rampant corruption within law enforcement. And quite frankly, this issue is not at the forefront of, say, the international intelligence community. Even though we see when there is destruction, when there is environmental degradation, ultimately that leads to unrest that does impact our national security, but nobody sees it that way now. It's just not a top priority. Out of any of the stories that we've done here on Techno, this was absolutely the most personal one to me. I've worked in the area of Peru for a couple years now and discovered new species there. And the thought that those species I discovered could go extinct for gold, that was pretty heartbreaking to me. So I guarantee you guys, we're gonna stay on top of this story and let you know of any updates. That's it for this episode of Techno. Be sure to check us out next time. Dive deep into these stories and go behind the scenes at aljazeera.com slash techno. Follow our expert contributors on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Google+, and more.